pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mayor, I just would, would note, uh, for those that may or may not know, that Mr. Dykes will not be here this evening. Uh, he did have a, his father-in-law passed away. I'm not sure exactly when, but uh, this weekend or today, I don't think he'll have the details. So, we can keep him in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you, Mr. First item on the agenda will be approval of the minutes from July the 23rd. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. It has been moved and second to approve the minutes. Would the clerk please call roll? Kahar? Yes. Malak? Yes. Shriver? Yes. Adams? Abstain? Okay. Next item on the agenda will be statement of the bills paid in the amount of $225,107.84. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to approve the statement of bills in the amount of 225-107-84. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the statement of bills made. Would the clerk please call the roll? Kahar? Yes. Milan? Yes. Driver? Yes. Adams? Yes. The next item on the agenda will be a request for comments from the public. There being none, we will move on to the next item on the agenda. We will be considered resolution 2018-19, formally accepting assistance to firefighters AFT grant award and executing the terms of the memorandum of understanding enabled by resolution 2018-03. And with that, uh, before you get started, I want to thank you very much, Chief, for your endeavor in writing this grant. So we really appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, Council Members, as you're aware, uh, earlier this year, myself uh, addressed the same Council uh, approaching to request permission to start a memorandum of understanding to facilitate a AFG regional grant for air packs for uh, City of Oversville, City of Barnard Springs, Johnson County Med Act, and Leavenworth Departments, Alexandria Township, Fairmount Township, Delaware County Fire District 1, Reno Township, uh, Sherman Township Fire Rescue, Stranger Township, and Tom and Oxford Township along Johnson County Med Act. Uh, as you all were aware in the email, we had proposed about a $1.8 million AFG grant. We were awarded a little over $1.2 million. So at this time, we do have two of the chiefs from Leavenworth, three of the chiefs from Leavenworth County in the audience with us tonight. I'd like to introduce uh, First off, it's going to be Chief uh, Smith from Tonganoxie Township, and then also it's going to be Chief Magaha, 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 Magaha give me an A plus. who's also the Leavenworth County Emergency Management Director, and then our own uh, EMS Deputy Chief Tony Burr, who's also the volunteer chief or the chief of the volunteer fire department of Alexandria Township. The others have all notified that they have had conflicts on the other council meetings and other projects. What we're requesting tonight is for the actual ability to sit there and officially award the AFG grant for the amount of $1,103,731, in which the city's matching requirement for the or the matching requirement for all the communities involved, ten total was $110,373. For the city of Everzill, this portion comes to approximately eleven thousand thirty-seven dollars, which will be paid out of the special sales tax fund. Additional expenditures, expenditures out of that fund may be necessary to acquire all the equipment originally intended to be part of the grant, which was rejected as part of the AFG portion of funding. We will come back to the council at a later date for that remaining portion of the funding prices. These purchases will be reviewed by the city council at a later date and are estimated to come in at approximately $17,000. The adopted 2018 special sales tax fund included funds for the new equipment in anticipation for this grant opportunity. Including the matching grant funds and anticipated expenditures for the additional equipment, the estimated cash balance at the end of this year's special sales tax fund is, is expected to be approximately $203,000. As we said earlier, we had gone into this MOU in the intention of pursuing this grant. We won the grant. We are hoping to execute this MOU and then start the process of tomorrow by sending out the RFP for AirPacks. We will be back in front of this body at the September 
fourth meeting um, with the authorization for the expenditure. We are asking that the council approve the resolution to allow myself and the city manager to start the process to follow the FEMA AFG grant requirements to pursue and execute this AFG award. Are there any questions at this time? Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to adopt Resolution 2018-19, a resolution formally accepting the, the assistance to the firefighters grant award and authorizing the execution of the terms of the memorandum of understanding enabled by Resolution 2018-03. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve Resolution 2018-19, formally accepting the assistance to firefighters grant award and executing the terms of the Memorandum of Understanding enabled by Resolution 2018-03. There are no further questions. Would the clerk please call the vote? Okay, huh? Yes. A lot? Yes. Shriver? Yes. Adams? Yes. Mayor, before we move on, I, I would like to personally thank uh, Chief Lidham. Uh, this is a significant uh, win, I, I would say. I mean, I'm not, I think, was there any other departments in Kansas? And I know we were probably one of the largest regional awards in this process. Uh, right, I was going to be three rounds awarded. So um, I, I do know there were 36,000 applicants this year. There will be right around 6,000 awards when it's all said and done. Um, right now, uh, as far as I understand, there were a couple smaller grants awarded. I'm not keeping up on that site. I've kind of been running around trying to get everything lined up with this, but so far this was the largest uh, regional um, this year uh, in the first three rounds that have been awarded as well. Um, like I said, uh, this this isn't no this isn't a small feature because of the fact that when you consider this is uh, two agencies in Wyandotte County, a very large EMS agency in Johnson County, which protects over 500,000 people. This grant's going to affect about 680,000 taxpayers in three counties just outside of the metro area, not including the seven departments in Leadmore County, in which I know one department alone would not be able to purchase any type of equipment such as this without the assistance of AFG grant. And especially when you sit there and consider the amount and numbers of what we're going to be purchasing, um, has brought that price down for his agency to a little over $8,000. Yes. So it makes it very extremely manageable for a place that has a budget of just less than twenty-five thousand. So there are several other smaller agencies that took advantage. I know Tim in Conganoxie Township is in the same boat as well. Um, I would also like to identify, you know, that this was not just, you know, everybody's going to say, "Great job, you did." Um, along the way, every one of these chiefs had their input, had their time reviewing the items as well. Yes, I sat down and wrote the grant technically, but. Uh, it was their, their ability to also sit down and, and for all of us to sit down as one group effort and be collaborative with this for the region. So without any further questions, I'll sit down Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Tim, before you go, I'm going to have you do one more thing. So, again, I wanted to thank you. Uh, and instead of doing this later, I mean, I, I know you have a, a couple other chiefs here that they'd like to say anything. But would you go ahead and just, I mean, you know, one of the scouts, we're always trying to find ways to fund things. And, and this truly helps us. I mean, you know, Otherwise, we'd be buying 20 some odd sets of Airfax and you know thousands of dollars each. So I mean, when it comes to budget, and I know we're going to talk about it in a minute, it, it's significant. But I think Tim also has some other news that we just learned uh, late Friday or Saturday while he was at uh, another one of his uh, functions, serving as chief within uh, you know the national body. So I I think we're we're very uh, it's nice that we have chiefs, all of our, our, of our people, our fire chief that's actively involved in these kind of things. As I've said in the past, uh, the reason you get funded in these kind of things is because you participate, you're sitting at the table, and, and we're doing that. But, Chief, go ahead and tell them some other good news while you're out there. Uh, Friday, we received, not her. we received notification early last week, Kansas Sports Year Grant, which is a 50% matching grant. Uh, we had applied for forty nine hundred fifty three dollars, which is the matching of twenty four hundred and seventy six dollars, two thousand four hundred sixty six dollars was approved. We had already purchased the equipment as part of the wildland equipment that was bought in two thousand eighteen. Friday, when I was in FRI in Dallas, the Federal Aid, Emergency Management Agency, the Fire Act people just gave us one point one million dollars. It's 
also given the Eversville Fire Department $17,000 to purchase eight sets of PPE, the firefighter turnout gear, which costs about $24 a pop. Um, our matching is 5% on that, so we are buying eight sets of turnout gear for right at $1,000. Um, we were awarded both grants this year that we applied for. Like I said, out of 36,000, about 6,000 people will be awarded grants. It's a little bit different than law enforcement grants. Um, it's a very competitive process. Uh, you take advantage when you win one. It is surprising when you win both of them in the year. So that's the high point going into uh, the budget process. So there's no rest of the week and say, where are you going to go next? Uh, <laughs> Let's find someplace else to go. Uh, the, 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 the stark reality is, is it's great to have federal funding and grants out there. Um, they are not a crutch that we can rely upon every time. They are nice to fill in voids when we have to. Um, and closing with that, like I said, you know, it is one of those items that's just nice to sit there and have your name attached to it too that you're able to do for your community. Thank you. Thank you. Chief Smith or Chief McGowan, thank you for coming. If you, I just like to say a word to the. Uh, yeah, you want to go, I won't go. I won't make you go through the formalities. We have, we have a short meeting so. tonight. So. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> Chuck McGowan, the fire chief for uh, Fairmont Township, as well as the emergency manager for Lovelock County. But uh, on behalf of the departments that aren't here, and especially uh, Fairmont Township, I want to thank. Uh, Mayor and, and the members of the council to allowing Chief Whitman to apply for this. We were trying to figure out budget wise, and I know that you folks do that on a day to day basis on how we were going to fund $180,000 worth of air packs. Uh, all our air packs are coming due. Uh, we tried to get in a five year rotation, and that just wasn't going to work, but we were going to have to make it work. So, again, on behalf of uh, Fairmont Township and those departments that are present, I want to thank you. Tim, personally, I want to thank you. Uh, Tony was a, was a big cob in this wheel, to uh, believe it or not, but uh, he, he got us all together <laughs> at our um, fire, fire association meeting and said, How many would be interested? And all but two hands went up. So, those are our departments. So, again, I want to thank you for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Tim Smith with Tongue Township Fire Department, and I want to echo Chuck's sentiments uh, on the Township Board on their behalf and on the Fire Department's behalf of you guys allowing Chief Whitman to write this grant and for the Council to be willing to be the administrators for the grant for the funding. So just thank you very much for that. We, we definitely appreciate it. Definitely a pleasure, a pleasure on our part. Yeah, for yes. sure. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, the next item on the agenda is consider setting a maximum fiscal 2019 budget and calling for a public hearing August the 27th, 2018. I'll come up here, sir. Setting at the table 
when we see opportunities to pursue opportunities, you know, again, some of them are small, like the $15,000 we got to, to add to our trail system through the uh, Slitterbond uh, uh, and Speedway grant, you know, a fairly small number, 15000 to $3 million in STP funds. So uh, I just want you to know we, we are always looking at opportunities and trying to find those, and we can't do without your support. So thank you very much. On the budget side, uh, again, we, we always come back to our critical success factors. Uh, I, you know, those being communications, uh, funding, as we've just been talking about, growth and development, which I know we've, we're certainly seeing a lot of that. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Identifying opportunities. Again, these grants are one of those opportunities that we pursue. Uh, working on getting our community leadership, ownership, and engagement. You know, really do want to see more people engaged in the process. And then, of course, long-term planning, uh, which is an ongoing uh, basis and sometimes difficult because you're trying to do all the short-term stuff. Sometimes it's hard to get the long-term stuff done. Well, I'm going to start the budget out with good news. At least from my standpoint, this is good news. So what you're going to see tonight and what's going to be presented includes these things. No mill increase, pay raises for all employees. So again, what I proposed to you before, basically it's a 5% COLA instead of the traditional 3% steps. We work in a different way, but that's what happens. Uh, because we've had some growth in the property tax side, because we're not have to take from other funds to move to these funds to, to pay for things. We can put more money back into our roads and streets here locally. Uh, we still believe the replacement of the fire truck, which doesn't impact the property tax rate at all, is necessary. It's something we need to do forthwith. Uh, we can talk about that a little bit more, but because there's chassis on the ground right now that are ready to go, and if we wait, we're going to lose that potential, and we know there's going to be price increases. We've already been advised of that. So there are a long lead time. They, you know, from a payment standpoint, one will hit late in 2019. But you know, order today, we're talking summer of 2019 uh, to go from there. And we're maintaining a positive cash balance. We're actually this year proposing a budget that for all intents and purposes, lines up revenues to expenditures. As you know, in the last couple of years, uh, we've generally budgeted for uh, our expenditures to exceed revenues, and, and we've been fortunate that they've come back fairly close. Uh, but with the increases in, in revenues and doing a little more work on trending, uh, we feel like it's a tighter budget uh, to work with. We certainly always hope that it comes in more revenue and less expenditures. We always <laughs> like that. But I don't think we can depend upon uh, that happening year after year. Uh, so one of the things, and I know you all have seen this, uh, is this breakdown of, of the dollar. You know, so if I put a dollar in tax money, where is that tax money going? So how much is going for each of the things that a property taxpayer is paying? So where does the money go? And on, this was also presented in the Wyandotte County budget document, so if you go to their site, you'll see exactly the same same information. But about 21 cents of every dollar goes to the county side of the UG budget. Obviously, we don't fund the city side. So when you're paying property tax in the county, 21 cents of every dollar that's paid in taxes, 21 cents of that's going to the, to the county. About 26 cents is going Edwardsville. And these numbers were rounded, the whole number, so uh, I mean, we didn't try to get it down to the tenths of cents, but uh, so some of them is a little higher, a little lower. We're actually a little less than 26 cents, but it just, that's the way it works. Uh, one cent goes to the state of Kansas, which again, the way Kansas is set up on the way that they, they do their budgets, uh, property tax is one and a half mills, been that way forever but it only takes about a penny out of every dollar in taxes. Uh, about three cents for the library. Remember, we are part of the Wyandotte County Library System. We don't have our own library, and we don't do our own library bill. So if you did a Bonner Springs or any number of communities that have local libraries, they may have, they probably do, uh, I can't think one that does, it has a mill specifically for the library. 
Uh, as not unexpected, the largest percentage goes to schools. About 34 cents out of every dollar goes to school of education. Uh, pretty typical of what happens uh, in, in funding. Schools generally represent the largest. And then the last uh, section is the community college, which is about 15 cents. I know, uh, you know that community colleges are always one of those areas where there's some discussions, but we don't really have much control over anything but the 26 cents. So just, I know there's discussions like, so where's our dollar, you know, where's the tax go to? So 21 for county operations, 26 for city, a little bit for the state, the library, again, schools is the biggest portion, uh, and then the Kansas City, Kansas Community College. Obviously, the county and the school and the community college also have a bigger pool that they draw from, but this is based on people that live in Edwardsville inside the USD 204 school district. There's a few people, we have a few properties that are actually in uh, the 500 school district, but it's a small number and it's probably, I'm not sure which ones they are, they probably, some of that's commercial, we know that for sure. So that's the majority of ours is right. That'd be a great graphic to put in the hot shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so just a few things about the property tax assessment and some of this I'm going back to last year uh, just to remind us of where we've been at. So this time last year when we were going through the budget, uh, we had been given our property valuation number and it was $55,560,252. So that was our total assessed value. As a whole, the council said, okay, based on that, what we need to do, we want to hold the mill levy steady. As you know, in November, of, so the budget's already approved and done, we're given a number of $57 million, which is, as you can see, about a million and a half dollars more than we were anticipating. So as a result, the way the formula works, uh, if that number goes up, your mill levy is going to go down because, again, the county is setting a mill levy based upon what number we tell them we need in property tax. So if we say we need $2 million in property tax, they take you know, the assessed value times whatever that mill levy number is to get you $2 million. That's just how the formula works. The bad side of that, and not, not this, is that we didn't get the opportunity to fully discuss what we wanted to do, right? We may have still lowered the mill levy, which went down about 1.2 mills. Would we have done that much? Would we have done less? Would we have you know, still held it the same? You know, we can't really cry over still milk and go backwards. But it was about a $50,000 discussion that we didn't get to have. And I know there was a number of items we talked about. Well, if we had the money, we might have done this. So that obviously kind of bleeds into the current year. I will say, so what we had originally adopted was 47,367 overall, and the final mill levy is at 46,155. Again, we've rounded those numbers. They go out six digits, but we typically round them all. Just to give some history about what we have done, uh, again, some of those, if you've been here for many years, saw this, as you might have expected, around uh, from 2000, roughly 10, to about 2014, values went way down. They started to come back up. Around 2017 was where we got back to even, roughly. So if I go back to 2008, our mill, our total assessed value was about that 51, 52 million. So it's really only been the last couple of years that we have benefited from growth in, in the value. As you can see, we generally have budgeted for a fairly stable uh, mill, but one of the things we've done uh, is we've reduced the general fund uh, and offset it with the, on the debt side. And part of that was just when debt was coming due and, and you got to make the debt payments that were funded through the general obligation debt. But overall, our mill levy has stayed fairly level back in 14, we expected to be at 47,424. It ultimately came in at 47,367. It, it held firm for four years. 
went down last year. And again, as we are here tonight, our recommendation is to hold the total mill levy as well as the mix between the general fund and the debt service uh, as it is in the current year. I think another interesting uh, fact to just understand, so who pays our property taxes? Uh, and what's interesting, I, it probably no surprise, obviously we've had a very productive industrial park and we've used IRBs to help grow that park and there's always the question is, well, are they really paying off? Is it really helping the community to get these, these tax abatements? What I want to note before I find the, the, the point, so when we look at the appraised value, you'll see that our residential, and, and they include residential also being apartments, so whatever the value of apartments and also residences on home sites. So if they're on like a 10-acre lot, they consider that an agricultural home site, but they still calculate it as residential. We, we obviously have slightly, we have about $50 million more in value from an appraised. But recall the way the assessed number comes in is residential is assessed at 11.5% of its appraised value, where commercial and industrial is at 25%. So you effectively get a doubling uh, effect there, or in other words, the residential pays less. And then you see that right here. So on the 182 million, almost 183, you get 21 million assessed, but down on the 133 million, you get 33 million. And what ultimately happens is in Edwardsville, about 60% of our taxes is actually being paid for by the commercial industrial base and about 38% of that's coming from the residential base. The other thing is that commercial industrial base is kicking in another $326,000 in IRB fees. So they're not even in the assessed area, so they don't count in your assessments. They're completely appraisals and assessments. They're pulled completely out. They pay pilots. So they add another $300,000. So if you kick that number in, Obviously, that percentage would go up even more. For comparison, uh, and probably the easiest comparison is to look to our our sister city to the uh, to the West Bonner Springs. Their residential property tax is about 69 percent of all taxes, property tax, and their commercial is about 29.7. So it's almost a complete reverse. Not completely unexpected when you look at the two communities that built a lot of houses, have a lot of residential properties, not as much in the commercial. Obviously, the benefit they have is a lot stronger sales tax base than we do. And as you know, I've talked many times about how do we grow our sales tax base because that really is an area we need to focus on and do focus on. So, in the bottom line, what you really get is for Every one of those commercial dollars, you got to have about 20 residential dollars. So if you wanted to generate a million dollars on the commercial side, you'd have to have 20 homes roughly to generate that same amount of money. Not that homes are bad and, and commercial's great, it's just that's, that's the thing here. I, I think what we have to be cautious about, I was, you know, this is great and this is wonderful, but we also have to always remember because we do have a good portion of our property here, if you have economic issues that impact one or two of our large industrial customers and you get into vacant buildings and they start lowering in the value, it can have some pretty quick impacts to us on the property tax side. So, but I think, I never, I real, I figured it was probably commercial. I didn't realize it was quite this level of 60 to 38, so. All right, so on to the really the work of the day. Lots of numbers there, right? Uh, you can see the breakdown in our general fund revenue. Uh, as you would generally expect, property tax is our single largest, and that's both current and <coughs> taxes. Uh, just over $2 million is what we estimated in 2019, followed by sales taxes, which is all of our sales tax, our city and county sales and use taxes. So, you know, we get a certain percentage of county sales and use tax based on a formula. Uh, 
followed by franchise fees and then gaming fees and, and, and on down the way. Other is, is kind of a hodgepodge of everything from sports fees to uh, building permits, etc. And quite honestly, a lot of those others are in and out, right? So building permits, we might get $50,000, but then we turn around and pay the contractor $45,000 of that. So the ones that really fund the vast majority of the, of the government are those top you know, six in there. EMS, again, is more or less paying a portion of the cost to provide EMS services. Uh, court fees don't pay for police departments. I mean, we hear that a lot. Uh, we couldn't run a police department in a court on 337000 so uh, running tickets is not a profitable thing. Solving crimes is what police departments do, and that's one mechanism that they do. So breaking this down, so what we, we, we have here is we're just kind of breaking this down by each of the departments as we refer to them. Uh, we really have four areas, as you know. We have admin areas. We have the public safety, which is really police, fire, and courts. We have public works, and we kind of have parks and, and recreation uh, are, are the four big areas. On the general admin side, uh, as you see, we are uh, uh, basically from our estimate to 2019 are just seeing a slight overall increase. Uh, I think it's about half a percent is the difference there. Uh, fairly flat, no big purchases in there, no big issues in there uh, in, in admin. Uh, Mike, on the contractual yeah. services, what, what, how do we, what are we not doing that we did this year in contractual services? Facility study. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. I was going to have to ask that, but. I mean, in that contractual services, all the kind of contractual professional, I mean, are you know, city attorneys. So a lot of the, a lot of those kind of broader things get captured in the admin department. So sometimes when you look at it as a percentage, you'll see later it looks like we spend a lot of admin, but you know, we pay for a lot of things out of there that are just unallocated. You know, we transfer twenty thousand dollars out to pay for computer services and put it into our technology fund. So that's just. You know, it all comes out of admin, even though every department benefits, but we don't try to go back and do an application study for all these things. On the fire EMS side, uh, and I will say this just so we're all clear, there's nothing in this budget that funds any new positions. So I haven't proposed any position for funding the pay stuff, but not positions. But as you know, that, I mean, not that it's not needed, uh, trying to keep the budget foundation. I don't be surprised if we don't have to come back and have more discussions about this but relative to the current budget. This is where we're at. Uh, again, uh, not a large increase. It's about 6.3%. But again, this builds in the, the COLA adjustments of 5%. And as you will see in both police and fire, good, bad, or otherwise, the adjustments on the pay have a larger impact because the benefits primarily on the retirement side is a lot different. So CAPERS, our contributions from the city is around 9%. On KPNF, it's 22, 3%. So it's just a lot larger number. And where do most of our employees work? They work in police and fire EMS services. That's the vast majority of our number. With that said, we're still setting uh, at uh, about 100,000 increase, or about 6.3 percent. So, uh, again, uh, some things we were budgeting for, thought we we're going to have to take out. Thankfully, we got funding for bunker here tonight. Uh, that was one of the items we were looking to, uh, you know, it had pulled back out of our budget, and now we haven't funded. We typically fund three sets every year. So, uh, is that where that 7,000 comes from? Uh, some of the grant money is that. Right. Yeah, the money that we're getting from the grants, which I think our contribution is about a thousand dollars, which doesn't even pay for part of the turnout. The seventeen thousand we're getting. Yeah, the thousand dollars would just buy a pair of pants. Yeah, that'd, that'd be it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the police side, again, pretty pretty flat. Nothing nothing really new in in the police department. No new staffing, standard replacement of our vehicles, rotations. Uh, 
you know, people stuff. I mean, again, there's nothing in there that is just significant. I mean, there's some improvements like for data for the interrogation rooms or you know, updates and you know, cameras and stuff like that, and really stuff that's just normal everyday things that we do uh, and, and working through. We would have the nine thousand or the ten thousand dollar difference on equipment there. Uh, I'm not sure what we had in the current year on the equipment. Was that on the computer system that we had yes. the biggest? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, we did uh, some uh, upgrades in computer server uh, and PD equipment. That was the biggest cost. But obviously, it's not next year. Mm -hmm. uh, public works, uh, again, <laughs> relatively flat. Uh, some of the things that we do uh, relative to streets and street maintenance are covered more in the special street fund and in the sales tax, special sales tax fund, which is intentionally why we created that fund, or was part of that there. Uh, to try to take some of these big capital items out of the general fund budget and support it through sales tax and through the special street fund. We do have, I will say one thing in public works, which is it, it, probably the biggest increase in the contractual services. You all may have heard of this thing it's called an MS4 permit. So it has to do with stormwater permitting. And because we're in an urbanized area, we have to do water sampling. So we already do that now. And then the next step is we have to go and uh, basically inventory all of our sewer system, which will be done through the sewer fund and we have to inventory all of our stormwater. So by that I mean crossroad pipes, drainage ditches, uh, any type of drainage structures, detention basins that we may have. All of those things have to be uh, put into a system and we have to continue to report that and the conditions of that and then get the water quality. So right now we're talking about water flows. If the quality it's impact, it doesn't meet the test, so far that hasn't happened, then we have to implement other improvements into the system to address water quality. We did have a recent audit through KDG, it's kind of a, uh, I won't say a cursory, but it, it, it's one where they come in and work with the community and, and help identify areas that you need to address, and they've done that just recently, and Tammy has been working on that for some time. It's another one of those somewhat mandated things that we don't really have a choice to do. We have to do them. Uh, the, the option of not doing them is, is not a good option. It's like many things we do. So there are some uh, expenses that will be related around that and, and we may have to do some more things as the year goes on. Uh, really in Parks and Rec, nothing much there. Uh, Overall, the Parks Department, uh, with Zach's help, they're really trying to expand the offering of services so we can try to do some more offerings uh, and kind of diversify that a little bit. We have seen, I think, the urban board. Soccer revenues are down just because there's more options for kids. Uh, some places didn't have soccer, now they do have soccer. So uh, we're trying to do some things like the, you know, this year we're going to do fall baseball. Uh, as an option we haven't done. See how those things work. Some of them will probably work, some of them probably won't work, but uh, we'll continue to work through it. And then municipal court, again, I mean, court is, uh, quite honestly, a lot of things in the court that's hard to budget for, like cash bonds and things like that. So every year we, we assume what our court fees are going to be, what these cash bonds are going to be, but it's all dependent upon the activity. So if the number of citations increase or other types of charges for the court fees, those are going to go up. If people go to jail, you know, they go up and we make some assumptions, we do a pretty good job, but I can tell you that's one area where it's really, really difficult. You know, people post a cash bond and then they say, show up to court and say, oh, okay, I'll just have my bond applied to my ticket, which is fine, but we should have to budget for that because it's, it's a revenue on one side, it's an expense on the, you know, somewhere you have to write that check from. So, uh, court's probably one of the hardest ones to really budget for, though the primary revenue in there obviously is court fines, which days the 
between 325 and 350 is pretty, pretty consistent where that stays at. It is a very busy court. Uh, it is an area where staffing also is, is lacking, uh, especially when you're on court day. So if you ever have an interest on court day, come the first and third or second and fourth. First, first or third, we'd be happy to have you come. And Chief will put you to work. He'll put you on a wand out there and let you uh, be court security. First and third one. Thursday, I'm sorry. Come and have fun. Uh, the last thing, community center, again, no significant changes there. So, really, uh, where does the money again go to? Uh, as you might expect, the vast majority goes to pay benefits, uh, you know, not in common. I think as your city gets larger, you'll see that part come down. Uh, you know, probably. I don't know, cities on average probably are 65 or 70 percent, but it's somewhat dependent on size and where people are housed at. Most of the other parts are pretty standard. I, I would say if I had an area, I'd like to see us fund more capital outlay opportunities, mainly again in improvements, whether it be few improvements in parks, you know, street signs, uh, things that we don't really think about. We don't think they cost very much until you go replace 50 stop signs and you get a bill for thousands and thousands of dollars, not to mention the time and the people and all that. So uh, probably the area will continue to focus towards. Uh, and then when you look at it by department, again, as you're not surprised, police and fire make up, you know, 70% of the budget, right? The vast majority of where our people are at is 24-7, high dollar stuff, you know, we buy stuff. Nothing's cheap in either one of those departments. Uh, again, you see admin in court being 20%, but again, we put a lot of things in admin that are, you know, are just broad items. You know, there's the council pay to, you know, helping fund the festivals to, uh, you know, postage. A lot of these things get, get put into the administrative areas. Uh, again, if I, you know, ultimately, I think we'd like to see both public works and court. I mean, public. Works and parks and rec take a at least be a bigger piece of the pie. Uh, if you the pie was the same. So, uh, and you know, you all have been here, heard me say this a million times. You know, cash balance is critical. Uh, we know where we were at ten years ago. We know that today we sit there with a double A minus bond rating. We know we're maintaining 15 plus percent in our <coughs> reserve balance, absolutely where we need to be, where we need to stay to be. And the 2019 budget, while it reduces that amount by about 16,000, in the prior year we actually budgeted a reduction of 117,000 for 2018. And right now we probably will be about break even if everything keeps going the way we see it. In other words, Instead of a reduction of 117,000, we think will be pretty much a straight push. So we hope to, you know, this shows a slight increase, but uh, you know, we hope to be right in that $900,000 range as we close out the year end this year. And then we've kind of done some projections going out. Uh, again, we make assumptions on. You know, revenues and expenditures, we've typically been growing about 2% on the expenditure side. We know we'll have some new uh, sales tax coming in. So in that case, we may, we obviously may say, well, we want to increase our expenditures for some of those things we've talked about that need to be done in 2020, 21, 22, etc. So uh, again, just as we've talked about, keeping our cash balance and total expenditures, we have been pretty consistent, right around the 15% range. That's kind of the, the standard. It, you know, like our policy says we'd be 15 to 18% of general fund expenditures. We stay right there with the policy. I'd always say I'd rather have 18%, but uh, you know, we had days when we were negative, so <laughs> we were below zero, or we were two or three percent. So uh, through a lot of hard work by a lot of people, we did this keeping that consistent. And that's one of the majors we look at when we're doing budget. How is, how is what we're proposing going to impact this number and where does it get us to? So we stay focused on that. And then basically the bottom line, so the summary 
In 2018, uh, we budgeted just under $5.6 million to run our operations. Uh, we are right now looking at being about 5.625 is what our actual costs are, what we believe that will be at year end. Uh, and revenue is caught up to some of those. And then in 2019, we're looking at a budget of just under $5.9 million. Pretty stable growth in budget and what we do. And continue to be, a, I would say, a fairly conservative process. I'm going to stop there for just a second. That's the general fund. As you know, that's probably the, that is the biggest thing we do. That's paying for all the services that most people think about, right? Their police and their fire and their snow removal and their you know, trimming of, of trees along the rights of way or the parks getting mowed or any of those kind of things. So again, the big issues there is we are proposing that pay increase. I, I think we've shown plenty of data to show we're behind. We, we unfortunately know we have another paramedic that's going to be leaving us go to another agency where you can make more money. And that's fundamentally what it is. Uh, do I think 5% is going to solve all the problem? I do not. I think I've shown, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty good down at the bottom, but as we move up, we don't. And in the middle, it was really, you know, the middle being our middle people, right? So uh, that's where we start seeing the biggest, biggest gaps. It gets in our professional ranks. And, I would tell you, just trying to hire the person back there has just been, you know, incredible. I mean, people come in and, and they're making ten thousand dollars more where they're at, five ten thousand dollars more where they're at, and oh, okay, well, thank you, you're not interested, or, or you know, just trying to recruit. It, it's challenging, and I know all the departments can say the same thing. So I don't think that's unreasonable. In reality, it's only a two percent difference in what we typically do. Because typically we do steps. We're just keeping, people are going to stay in the same step, but the step's going to be worth 5% more. So call it a COLA, call it a pay plan adjustment, call it whatever. Uh, but it's funded in this budget. Mike, for next year's budget, are you going to start spending some of this year really addressing this and, and how we can approach the differential as, the, as we get higher into the steps? I'm not sure I totally understand well, your question. So. I think we, we need a plan. Obviously, right. you know, this 2% a year is, we actually get further behind every year right. with that kind of approach. Right. Um, but developing some kind of a plan so that our, our upper steps are more competitive. Right. Well, I think we do a couple of things there. I mean, number one, and we've been doing this, right? So if you remember when this plan was put together for those that were here, it was a five-step plan. So one of the things we also are proposing in this, which has some budget impact but fairly limited in reality because people aren't moving steps, but all positions are have seven steps. So right now, are, are, I, hate to, I don't like the word lower position, but the positions that are on that A through E or F on our pay plan are five steps and then or seven and then everything else is fine. And we did that quite honestly because those positions were hitting up against the cap and it was creating problems. So we're seeing the same thing throughout. So by adding those two steps will help that sum. The other thing, if, when we did this pay plan, if you remember, step five was the market at the time, right? So we said basically five is kind of near the, the, what the market was at the time, and we wanted to have an opportunity to grow into the market. So if we did these 3% steps and we did some colas of 1.5% or 2% a year, by the time we got people to step five, they would be keeping up with the market. And, we weren't able to do that as well as we'd like relative to the coal adjustments from a financial standpoint. So what we have done, uh, you know, we bring people into step three or step four. The downside of that, when you only have five steps, in a year they're out. So that's the reason why the seven steps will help us in that standpoint. But I do think it's also looking at the funding mechanisms that we have and say, if we want to fund 3% steps and, and a COLA adjustment, and we assume COLA is one and a half or two or three or whatever that number is, put together some, what's that financial impact? Because again, I, I, you know, I don't mean to pick on police and fire, but when I, when I hire that, you know, I can't hire a policeman or a fireman entry level, it's gonna cost $75,000 a year. 
by the time you put the pay and the benefits and the health insurance, I mean, that's just what it costs. So I think you've heard from both of them. They're both absolutely right. You know, we need more people in that area, not to mention, you know, whether it's admin, public works, et cetera. I can hire an admin person dollar for dollar cheaper than I can hire a police or firefighter, but, you know, how do you, how do you fill those gaps? And, and again, we're talking about firefighters, you, you can't really hire one. You've got to have some mechanism of hiring three. Now, you may stagger them over 12 months or wait mid-year and bring three on all together in kind of a training class, but fire department's working multiples of three. Police department, they can do ones, but you, you still have the same situation because you have three shifts, right? However you work your shifts, you still got an A shift, a B shift, and a C shift. It may be eight hours, it may be 24 hours, but those two worlds kind of work in the multiples of three. And that's, that's probably the biggest challenge of how do we fund those positions up now. I think we have some great economic opportunities that we haven't had, you know, and I know we're all ready to, to move dirt and get things going. I think as the hotel project comes online and, you know, as I said here today, everything is positive and we're moving forward. And the next council meeting, we're going to have a whole slew of public hearings and, uh, you know, hopefully they're going to be issuing all the, the necessary debt and the financing all that in September so they can immediately start construction. I mean, that's the best thing they've given to us consistently. That will start to open up, you know, open things up. But always the problem is property tax comes behind, right? So I got to provide service today for a building, but it doesn't generate any money 18 months, two years down the road in reality. Sales tax, the good thing about it, when they open the door, 75 days, I'm at least seeing something coming back to me. Just the cycle gets it back in there at 75 to 90 days. So we're always behind the curve. You know, you, you've got to fund the people before you get the funding. That, that will always be the case. Anything else around general fund, again, I think the message is we focused our energy on the areas that we talked about, which was pay people in capital improvements, and we're going to talk a little more about capital improvements. I wish I could stand here today and say I found a way to come up with several hundred thousand dollars. Uh, and it's doable if you want to spend down the cash balance. Uh, and and, it, and it, again, I think it's something that we may come back, we we'll probably, we need to revisit it again mid-year, the budget, or, or a little before, to see where things are going and see if we can do that, understanding a little bit better where some of the economic development pieces will be at. So I hope to be able to come back to you in three to six months and say, hey, things are even better than we, you know, we're always projecting, you know, we're, we're looking at things, we're looking at year in balance, you know, that's 16 months out. And, it's all, I mean, you try to do good guesses and do a lot of work, but, you know, it could go either way. Okay. I'll get to the more important things then. Uh, debt service. Uh, in reality, our debt service is going down a little bit. But our fixed debt. You see big numbers, and oh my, $2 million are going from a million to two. As you remember, we have temporary debt for the LTC sewer. That has to be refunded in 2019, uh, I think by September of 2019. So money will come, you know, will issue long-term debt. Long-term <coughs> debt will uh, pay off the short-term debt, so that's the expense side. Uh, the revenue is the money comes in from the bonds, and the money goes out to pay off that. And then in 2020, that piece of debt will hit our books. Now, one of the things we've been doing that debt's going to cost about $65,000 a year, sewer-related debt, right? We're budgeting $65,000 a year right now from our sewer fund. We have been for a couple of years to help offset debt. Now, prior to now, it was just to help offset debt. Going forward, it's to pay for the debt directly associated with sewer. What we have to do, though, is try to get away from the dependency of using the special highway fund and the special sales tax fund to pay for debt, even though they both can be used for that because of the road-related projects, we much prefer the special sales tax fund and the special highway fund doing stuff now, right? Paying for roads today and not paying for debt when we get a road two or three years ago. The area we probably have to spend, you know, 
time looking at as we move forward is what's the proper level of mill lending to pay for our debt. So when we look at it and say, where are we at? How much is our mill lending paying towards our debt? Well, as we budget, it's about 600000 and we're going to spend, take out the, the million or so, but we're going to be, uh, you know, closer to 900000 in current debt. So we're covering 60-70% of our debt with our tax base, and we should be covering almost all of that with taxes with the little bit that's assigned us. I'm not proposing to make any changes, but what it does do for this year, by holding a mill levy uh, flat, it allows a little bit of balance to build up in the debt service fund, so that when we issue debt, we've got that first payment in 2020. We won't have to look at, and maybe none, but it keeps us from having to all of a sudden turn around and try to jump the mill levy, you know, one or two mills to try to catch up on debt. So we're, we're basically proposing to build a little bit of reserve uh, in the cash as, as we move forward. That's at least the hope. Uh, we're not, not, not too much, I mean, there's not very much in there, but if we lower the mill levy in the debt service, it would take our cash down. But we will have debt service, and I think the other thing we look at when we do that debt, for that refinancing, is the time we look at debt financing, kind of the first phase of our of our facility studies, which effectively gives the fire station remodeling and upgrades. That's really the first step in that process. And so we will be coming back in 2019, probably the early part of 2019, to start the planning process. As you know, there's a number of steps that have to go on to get to the day we actually sell the bonds. Uh, special sales tax. Uh, the biggest change in, in expenditures here is the acquisition of the fire truck plant uh, as what's proposed. It would replace the existing pumper, which is 620. I don't think I have to tell anybody the challenges that we've had with that unit. But what we know is this, we have an offer on the table to buy that basically from a third party for $45,000. We know that the fire plant is roughly $725,000 if I remember right. If there's still one available for chassis, yeah. yeah. If chassis is available. So that means we finance around uh, $685,000 and that makes a payment of about $75,000 over 10 years. So this budget includes financing that fire truck and putting equipment on that fire truck. I mean, not all the equipment that we like, but I mean, fire truck comes with a certain amount, and we have to buy some additional hoses and things like that. But if we put, take 620, get rid of it, replace it with a quint, which then obviously serves as a second pumper or as an aerial device or the multiple purposes that it gives us. So that is the piece of equipment we need. Buying another pumper for $400,000 doesn't do us anything. So, yes, it's more expensive, but it's the right piece of equipment at the right time to the circle. So, what's the timeline on that? Well, if we can come back with the authorization, and we obviously we've got to have an adopted budget. Technically, this, this special sales tax fund, you, you could do it at any time because it's part of the special sales tax fund, but we've talked about we want to get through the budget process here. But we'd like to come back in September to place the order. The actual expense and the issuance of debt and everything will be in 2019, probably delivery early summer is kind of a, depending on, I mean, there's many variables, but. April, May is yeah. the earliest, it just depends on what's on the line going down there. Again, it has no impact on, in or out, it has zero impact on property taxes. Mm -hmm. None. You think there's a chance we could miss out on that? If we don't, you're yes. saying there's six chassis. There's five. There was five chassis. I don't know if there's still five. There's five. First of July. There's probably two or three. Middle of August. Very much. And there's once they're gone, out. once they're gone, it's a hundred thousand dollar jump, basically. Uh, is there a reason why we're waiting? Uh, just no. I don't think we could do it now. I don't know why we couldn't. Yeah. I, I think yeah, you know, for hundred grand, we we have a jump. I would not disagree with you. I mean, we, we can, 
it's a purchase authority. It's basically, I mean, we have to put together the authority, but we can advise. I mean, if that's our direction, we can tell the company, look, we may have to put a deposit up, but we can get all the paperwork and all the other things done and, and move forward. Anytime we expend money from the special sales tax fund, as you know, by policy, those have to come to the city county for your authority. Unless it's you know, five thousand. If we're not waiting on the the, um, the normal budgetary process to get the authorization because right. it's coming out of special sales tax, right? I don't see why we can't act on it earlier. We absolutely can. Yeah. Sounds like tomorrow would be a good day. <laughs> There's a possibility you could lose hundred thousand yeah. dollars today. Tonight. When that when that last chassis sells, effectively there's, 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 there's an increase. We can uh, finish this discussion. Yeah, if you want to take some time for the formal motion after the budget, I'm, I'm happy with that. So, um, it does also put more money into the, in the streets. I think I said that before, overall, between the special sales tax and the uh, between special sales tax and the special street fund, which is where we get money for uh, fuel taxes that come to us. We'll be able to put about seventy-five thousand dollars more in the streets in twenty-nine. When I say streets, that means anything related to street training. It can be pavement, it can be curbs, it can be sidewalks, it can be maintenance, it can be patching. But we can put about seventy-five thousand dollars more in twenty-nineteen than we were able to do in twenty-eighteen. So that street maintenance went from one hundred thousand to one hundred fifty thousand. We reduced some of our transfer to the debt service fund. Uh, from there, and that's basically the check. Which leads us into the special highway fund. Uh, again, this is one of those funds that's pretty much self-supporting. The one part we found that's interesting every year, so we get these numbers come from the Department of Transportation, and they estimate fuel tax, how much fuel tax, mm -hmm. and then Wyandotte County has a separate formula, which actually is to our benefit. Uh, so in Wyandotte County, 90% of the dollars that come to the county have to be distributed to the cities. I don't know why, where most of the other places it's 50 50, so 50% 50 stays with the county, and the other 50% stays with the cities in the county, but in Wyandotte County, it's 90%. Been that way, don't know why, we're happy. Uh, but, the, but that number is always underestimated, but it's a number provided to us. So on these documents is that's the number you plug in. They're generally twenty thousand dollars off. That pretty much fifteen to twenty thousand every year is money we have that we can't really budget for. And so that's kind of why you see from time to time it's like, well why did you budget so little and then at the end of the day we come in with fifteen or twenty thousand more or we go ahead and spend that money on street improvement. Right. This past year obviously we had some uh, pipe failures that we had to do and things like that. So it keeps us where we have a good balance in there. Sewer fund, uh, this will be really the first year in the sewer fund where we have full operations. You'll notice that our estimates for 2018 look low. And really the reason for that is we took over operation basically January of 2018. We had one month of revenues, and then we're on every two months thereafter. But unlike the way it was previously, we build in arrears. So in other words, they use the you know they use water. We get the water report. Based on that, we send the bill. So you're always paying in March or April. You're paying for you know February, March, and it goes that way throughout the year. When we budgeted, we kind of assumed that January through December 31st. So instead of having 12 months of revenue, we'll really have in this current year 10 months of revenue. And you'll see the same thing on the solid waste fund, which that kind of impacted the solid waste fund from its fund balance. And so we had to move some dollars just to shore that up from the sewer fund to the solid waste fund. And it's just purely a timing. Just before. We would bill in December for January, February, March. And so we have most of our money by January. But now it's just the opposite. So it's, just, it's a timing issue more than anything. The fund itself, uh, you know, is, is growing. This is one where we want to grow that cash balance and get that up to that 
this is really one where you want to see 18 to 20 percent. So you'd like to probably have that grow to $100,000 or so. But we're still working on a lot of assumptions. Uh, uh, you know, what's going to break and what's our contract going to be. And Tammy has been doing a great job. She has a new place now. She has a strong waste, wastewater background. And, and we're starting to, to understand some of the, the nuances of the system that just have to, have to get to know. So the sewer fund is kind of still in its infancy as we move forward. Solid waste, again, I think that's where, uh, you know, it's a self-supporting fund, uh, but because we lost some revenue in the current year, and as you recall, two years ago, we had a rate increase, and we kind of held off passing that rate increase along. So between those two things, it, it kind of depleted our cash balance. This is also where we do our special cleanup days and things of that nature. I will say that both the sewer and the solid waste fund are assuming that we'll do a 3% rate increase in those two funds, which on the solid waste fund, that's what we're going to get charged by our, by our provider. We're going to go back contractually. And on the sewer fund, uh, it's somewhat assumptions that some of those costs will go up. Uh, we know that on the UG side, that they're going up 5%. And we're only increasing the rate on the variable portion. So most of your residential customers end up with a fixed amount once they have a their winter average, whatever that is, then it's fixed for the next 12 months. So it, from a residential standpoint, it should be a fairly minimal impact between the two. But, but we are assuming we'll have to come back to you for final approval of 3% in each of those two funds. Economic development, uh, you know, again, it's somewhat money in, money out. Uh, we do know that in 2019, we will probably have, we have some rent payments coming from next door, and we know we'll have at least one IRB. Right now, it looks like we'll probably have three IRB applications come through here in the next four months. Three pretty major expansions, all in the industrial park. So there's 150,000 square foot project. Uh, we have another one that's at 105,000 square feet. And I don't remember what the third one was. Uh, <laughs> but the, 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 we still have expansions down there, and then we have one new project that should hit in 2019 that I don't think we've done the public hearing on. So still a fair amount of activity there, as well as we'll issue IRBs around the hotel project and why they don't generate a tax abatement so pilots it does generate the uh, percentage of bond sales so just like we did with uh, FedEx so they didn't get a tax abatement but we issued IRBs to pay for so they got the sales tax exemption on the tourist construction so technology fund again this one will pay for computers and stuff and things that aren't directly related to the department so if I have to buy a computer for our office and the admin that comes out of there or a piece of software. We're talking about the file servers and the switches and all the stuff that Mark knows about, all the stuff that he deals with. Uh, that you can't really say, well, that's, that's a, you know, just because the file server sets in the police department, it's not really a police department thing. So we put all that in technology. And there is on every fine, so the ticket, there's a $5 charge within there to help pay for that. That's how we pay for a number of the law enforcement and court improvements, but the software, the ticket writers, the computers and cars and things like that. Special events, that's what we'll be doing here in the very near future with AutoFest. Hopefully everybody will be able to come. I realize I'm going to miss the entertainment that night. Uh, I'm not sure how that worked out, but uh, I will be at another function that I have to be at. I made the decision to work on an icy maple with more equity meetings. That's about it. Again, I, you know, the summary is, as I started off with, I think it's all good news. Um, and keeping the mill levy level, uh, pay raises for our employees, well deserved. Uh, they do a lot of work and wear a lot of hats. Uh, Increase the amount we're putting in the streets. Uh, depending on actions here shortly, uh, acquire uh, that new fire truck through the special sales tax, which again was what it was adopted for, and maintain a cash balance of 15% of the I stand here for so any questions. So, what, what, what we, we need to do is set the public hearing? Yes.
Okay, so what we need to do, so based on what I just presented to you, we will, do you have the document there? The notice. The notice. So we put that in the paper, and again, if, if I'll just use an example, I'm not suggesting this, but just assume that you said, well, I want to increase the debt service mill levy by half a mill, but I think we're going to lower the general fund by half a mill. So you still get the same mill, but you want to move it. What we have to make sure to do is to adopt the highest possible number. Now, we're proposing no changes, and that's what you have before you, but if anybody thinks you know, we can't go above those numbers, so we say whatever it is, 35 and change on the general fund and 10.838 on the debt service fund. That's the maximum we could set the mill levy. We can lower it, but we can't really reduce one and increase the other, right? So if we, I don't see any reason to do that. I'm not proposing that, I'm just, so it's clear. And then we are basically saying that the amount of money the budget itself, the dollars and cents, is the maximum amount we would approve in our budget. As you know, every year we come back and do budget amendments for the expenditure side, but we can't amend what we do relative to revenues associated with the taxes. So if there's any feelings of any change there, now is the time to speak out. There's none proposed, but... Okay, and real quick, just to remind everybody, if you look at the, the revenue generated by the property tax, for the purposes of the state worksheets, we have to, they require us to assume that we're going to collect 100% of the property taxes, and we budget for 97% of that. Yeah. So we, we will put together the budget hearing, as we always do, here's kind of the state form, and here's the real, here's the real stuff, but, and we'll get there. With you. So in this motion, yes, sir. just to adopt the, the budget, well, we're you're setting a public hearing. Setting a public hearing, but we have to state that number. I think you can just per the per the uh, document. Okay, very good. Rather than insert a number. Okay, yes. very good. Number two. Okay, so we have the motion, and we set a public hearing. For August 27, 2018, at 7 p.m. in the City Hall Chamber. The purpose of hearing and answering objections of taxpayers related to the proposed use of all the funds in the amount of the ad valorem tax. As stated on the sheet that we have in our hand. Is that covered? Okay, I'm not going to repeat all that motion, but the motion has been and been. The second is to call for a public hearing on August the 27th, 7 p.m., 2018, with the documents that we have here as our. Okay. Could the clerk please call roll? Kr. Yes. Noah. Yes. Driver. Yes. Hat. Yes. So now, mayor, let's, let's tackle the uh, yes. moving forward with the special sales tax. To, to get our order into the project. Okay. So, yeah, so you tell us how do you want this to okay. do that. So, <laughs> our, our policy simply says that those have to obviously come yeah. before the council for the authority to move forward. We will not have actual purchasing of that item until it, it, we'll have to go, we will finance it and we'll have to bring all that back. So, so what I'm saying is, this motion does not need to have numbers just yet. No, I think it's just to authorize, authorize the to move forward, forward okay. with the acquisition and then come back <coughs> with the, you know, to notify the company yeah. of our intent to purchase and to come back to you with the necessary uh, financing, et cetera, documents, final numbers. And obviously at that point, if you I mean, that, that's still a point where I would say the council, you know, if I come back and say, oh, I'm sorry, it's $2 million, you're not obligated to yeah. still purchase it sure. uh, if, if there's, you know, changes. Uh, the obligation will come when you formally accept the financing and, the, and then we purchase it and then pay it. So just like we do when we purchase cars and other things. It's the man So, and so I think the motion would be to authorize staff to move forward with the acquisition process of uh, 
Go ahead. Yeah. I'll let the chief address it. Chief was just advising that what they would need, so it's for your fire apparatus, that it's a purchase through the, the typical, I don't know if it's going to go through HGAC or there's two or three of the, the companies. So the pricing, they, the fire department's looking at multiple models. What they basically need is a uh, contract, the, 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 the authority to acquire by the for a signed contract. Do we need to make this a simple motion? Yes, sir. To direct the city manager to pursue the purchase of a new fire truck as presented to us earlier this evening. Yes, sir. That's the motion. If our city attorney is happy with that, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. happy with that. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make that in the form of motion. Mm -hmm. Second. So the motion has been made and seconded, and I'm going to repeat all that because there's <laughs> okay. a lot of discussion about the exact wording that, that I trust the clerk slash his assistant city manager has that. So anyway, at this point, motion has been made in second to proceed with the acquisition of the fire apparatus. Would the clerk please call roll? K.R.? Yes. Mala? Yes. yes. Shriver? Yes. Adams? Yes. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So they got the other truck, which we've since salvaged, and now we have a newer truck. And so this this has been a long time coming. To say seven hundred thousand dollars that we're going to spend on a new fire truck just in the years past was just unheard of. So I think that's terrific, and I think it's a good direction that we're going. Much needed. It's much more useful than what we had. So that's my comment. Thank you. Chief Leader. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know everybody's like, oh, Chief, you wrote this grant, you wrote this grant, you wrote this grant, you got a lot of money. There's a lot of high points in here. We also need to recognize there was a police chief that wrote a grant for this city on the fire department side that provided staffing, which was the only staffing grant that put in Kansas that year, which is unheard of for somebody to do it. So this is not the first time that the federal government has given some money to Edwardsville alone. Um, I think we kind of, you know, need to recognize that, you know, that they're still around there as well. And then back to his 620 comment, you know, I didn't want to sit there and highlight it, but that's still an issue that we have. You know, Mr. Webb had alluded to, you know, we've spent almost $70,000 worth of apparatus repairs. Um, it eats the budget up. Uh, vehicle maintenance will so be a added uh, blessing to get it out of here. Hopefully the curse goes with it as well. <laughs> but also, as Mr. Webb also alluded, we are losing another firefighter paramedic. Um, that was notified today at about 4.30. Uh, he stopped by to say that he's already signed his letter of intent um, to go on to another agency. So you will see when we are out advertising again. However, we do have uh, plans that we've got part-timers that we'll be looking at. Um, we are going to put one of our part-timers in on an interim basis to fill on that ship once that employee will leave, so we are not going to get into a hurry to just purchase, um, or not to purchase, but to staff any employee. We're going to fit out a process and start building back up our pool of part time paramedics as well. We do have one that is already completely certified, and I'm not going to steal Tammy's thunder, but we still have some more good news coming. It's like Christmas hit in August, a couple <laughs> days behind. Um, but again, thank you for everything. I want to thank the council as department head and a resident for keeping the bill of the same, but also providing pay raises for employees. Um, I know I appreciate it as well as anybody else does that works here in the city, especially when you work here and live here. You know, I understand the concept of that, but man, what we're asking for, and have to sit there and also try to find that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a little more good news from the public work side. And, um, I've been working with uh, Chief Tim for about the not last nine months um, to secure a reimbursement from FEMA. Uh, we've been working with the Kansas Department of Emergency Management um, due to the storms that we had last summer. You remember, I mean, we had storms May through August, and the ones in July actually um, qualified for federal assistance. Um, and so we sustained some damage off 102nd Steel and 98th Street. And the issue was closed for a few weeks. But anyway, to make a long story short, today we um, finally signed off on um, our reimbursement. Um, we're sending it to FEMA, and we're going to be getting about, oh, maybe 13100 from FEMA, and then um, the Kansas Department of Emergency Management will be giving us another $1,300. So in total, we're going to be getting about $14,432 uh, from the state and the federal government for um, those repairs. So it's more good news. And thank Tim and also Michelle, because really, We've been working on it nine months our, ourselves, Tim and I, but the reality is there's a, a real lag time between um, all of us and all of our resources that we actually, you know, perform in the field, and then the record keeping that follows suit. You know, it doesn't it isn't declared disaster <coughs> months after, until months after the disaster occurs. So bless Michelle, she has all those records, and we go back, and, and she's an integral part of all of that as well. So just want to thank everybody for working together. Good night. Thank you, and congratulations again, Lisa. Well, I can't continue the trend of good news, but at least I don't like bad news. Okay. So I really don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, Chuck, what's wrong with you? We've got a whole longer list here. Um, let's start, I'll just start with the small stuff first. Richland in the 102nd, that fire hydrant, is still really rough. He's not even mowing around it because he can't. So. I didn't know. That's what it's turned backwards to. Uh, it, it very well could be. 
but <clears throat> that poor guy's trying to sell the field right there in front. Um, and I, I do think it'd be a really good idea to put the, the graphic of the dollar bill and also who pays taxes in Edwardsville. Because I think we as citizens need to really remember that we owe a great loyalty or a great thank you for all the businesses that are ponying out. And so I, I think it's good that the residents realize that businesses in town are extremely important to, uh, to their tax rates and so forth. Um, <clears throat> regarding the competitive pay, we really, and that's, that's always something on the table, but we really need to keep that going. And our most important assets in, in our city are <coughs> employees. And it needs to be recognized as such and compensated as such because we are competing with Home Park, Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri, Mission. That, those are our competitors. And we, our citizens, deserve as good or better employees than they do in those cities. So we need to keep that going. Um, the tree trimming, he's <clears throat> out doing work this evening, you know, whatever the machine is called. So yeah, it's really good to see that going. Is there any kind of an effort to pick up some of the larger branches that, that he cuts down? Um, actually, the, the mower operator goes back over them multiple times, and then we're going to come back with the right-of-way mower to, to mulch to them up. So I have a couple of citizens make comments about the larger pieces that are... You going. know, if, if there are some large ones that we can't mulch up, then certainly we'll come back and look at it. But at this point, we're just trying to get done what we can and get it off the road. We've really been blessed over the years with great writing. You know, Chief McPeace over the years and that Chief Woodham, I, we have been extremely fortunate through the years and, and that, I think a lot of that is due to the skill of you guys in writing grants and pursuing it and paying attention to details. So both of you, thank you very much. It's just greatly appreciated. It makes life up here a lot easier you know, if we didn't have those things. And, Lastly, Mike, I really appreciate your work on the budget, and I know Zach's deeply involved with that as well. But I can't remember if this is my ninth or tenth budget with you. Ten, probably ten. And um, it gets better every year, and I realize there's a tremendous amount of work that goes into it. But I, I uh, just greatly appreciate your efforts in making the city float <coughs> and keeping it floating. All we're here to do. Thank you very much. Carolyn? Um, I was just really excited about all the all the grants that came through um, and, and once again just to continue our effort and keeping tax dollars down, um, keeping the mill levy from raising. I mean, I think so many people in here have had a part of um, in one way or another keeping our tax base or taxes down for our people and that's such a big deal. Um, one thing I was going to ask about is if we, as we closed on the other, it looked like we had funded the other, the building. Yes. Have yes, we been well. able to communicate with the high rise about the parking lot just to let them? We have not, but we can give them a call on and tell them that they're free to park over if they need to. I think that will just make a big difference. Yeah. So, and that will be so appreciated. Right. So. The good thing is they're still holding the grass over there. <laughs> Hey, we didn't budget to work in the grass. <laughs> put it in the contract. I may put that in the closing documents. As long as they're there, they get to mow the grass for their app. So. Thank you. Very good. Jack, uh, you, you beat me to all of it, but uh, on, like the fire truck and, and the grants and all that, it just, you guys just make it so easy for us. You know, you're always prepared. Everything he's presented just you know crystal clear, and it just makes it simple for us to be able to make these decisions. You know, ten years ago I would have said, "Are we spending what on a what? Yeah. How are we going to pay for that?" But tonight I can say, "Yeah, let's spend that money and get that. We need it." And these people are professional, and they know how to go about this, and it's just really appreciated. By, by, I'm sure I'm speaking for all of us up here. But the, the professionalism that all you guys present is just amazing. You know, it just makes it really feel good to live here and to, to be able to be given on all of it. Uh, question on 
silent crossing. Any progress, any news, is that is that on the back burner? Uh, it's not on the back burner. Uh, the, the, the last time we met, they, the three things that were in play, they had submitted the, all the required plan documents to the railroad, and they expect the railroad to sign off on those prior to the end of the year. They have been in negotiations for the acquisition of properties uh, right here. And my understanding is that, at least at the last meeting, there was some general agreement. Now, now there's maybe the dollars and cents, but I mean, relative to some of the significant terms. And then the last piece, uh, they have sent us kind of two agreements that we're reviewing. One is just their right to come into the city and work. So the railroad portion. So for them to come in and work, it's kind of like having be like a private company coming in and working in the city and they have to get a permit. So it's kind of like a right of way permit. And then the other piece that we talked to them about is incorporating improvements to Fourth Street all the way from K thirty two to where the curb and gutter ends and what that would cost and you know incorporate that into a single project. It's probably about $100,000 worth of additional work, which is relatively, you know, like that way. So it put curb gutter sidewalks in, uh, I get the sidewalks in there, but it put curb and gutter, replace the pavement, and tie it into the existing curb and gutter section. Obviously, it's going to narrow it down, uh, but uh, that's it. Those are all places. And then the last thing is the railroad uh, continues to contact me saying, what are you going to pay us for the lease for the road? And, and we've been getting bids. And I know I got one today for just taking out that, that south portion of that's the road. That's their the yeah. yeah. So we're trying to do well, that. Well, I would say just close the road. Right. Well, you're going to have to close the portion of it. For the, side, for, the, for, the, for the crossing, it has to be closed the first right. however many hundred feet. So at that point, it's a, you've got a road going to nowhere, so I just take it all out and not pay $4,500 a year for a lease or something we pay $10 a year. I didn't want to take up a lot of time on this tonight. I'll yeah. come down with it with you. No, that's fine. I'm still adamant about getting this out of the process. I mean, it, it's funded, and I mean, it, it's just a slower process, and I know a lot of people want it. Quicker process, but it's just well, and part of that. I mean, it's been sitting at the at the federal, you know, at Union Pacific mainly. Or it's kind of like when you do a KDOT project and they tell you it's 28 months, but day you get, you know, so STP funds they give you once they give you a number, a project number, it's 28 months, not 26, not 30, it's 28 months. I mean, they just they have their format, and if it says they have six months to review it, it'll take them six months to review it. Thanks for that. The other thing I want to uh, see if maybe I had mentioned to Zach a month or two ago about maybe he said that we were waiting on the road, but maybe strike the community center parking lot. Because, you know, when I went down to vote the other day, there's, you don't know where to park. You don't know how to exit. You know, if you're if you're facing north, you don't know that you got to turn around and go back out for south end. You know, just the need for error or strike or something. I think we're getting so we we're getting some bids for street striping and we can open well, I, 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 I kind of forgot about that was all needed to come there. Yeah. And again for we need all that stuff. Anyway, once again thanks all the staff for you know this it's great. Well that's how it goes. The last person <laughs> that did everything. And thank you all again from Michelle to Zach to the Chiefs to Mike, Tammy, everybody. Um, it is very exciting. I would hope, Zach, you could put something in the hot shot about the, you know, the four million. Yeah. I mean, just something. That's mm -hmm. that's exciting. And the the dollar and the allocations of the dollar is extremely interesting too. Yeah. Can I ask you something about the the, the school district two hundred four? Did that increase when the Delaware school went in? Do you know? I, I, I meant to ask you that when you were giving that presentation, but I I think it went up. But I think I've heard, but I, I don't know that they were looking at a slight decrease this year. Really? Oh, One or two mills potentially this year in in their in their budget. That's what I agree.
difficult game, saying I know on the city side, the city being uh, honored that uh, they're having their public hearing tonight, right. and it was posted, you know, up to, I think, 4.5 million increase. I don't know what, what to adopt, but mainly all for debt, for debt related to facilities. So, yeah. And remind me again, when does the special sales tax sunset? When is the 2024 or 23? I think it's 24. I think it's 24. Oh, is it 24? Yeah, okay. we have a little bit of time. Okay. Yeah, so it was 10 years of 2014. So yeah, yeah. 24. Yeah. That one. Yeah. But you want to start about two years out. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure. you, you had mentioned that a couple of weeks ago, and I yeah. thought I already forgot what yeah. that yeah. was. So yeah, so we want to, you know, about two years out. You want, you know, because quite honestly, you want to give yourself more than one voting opportunity. <laughs> I mean, I think we, I think we've been very, I think we've been very good in, in you know, we said what we're going to use the money for. We've been using the money for it. I don't think it takes very far for anybody to look around and see that those dollars have, have been well spent for the claims we said we're going to do. Right, fire, fire, you know, effectively we'll have to replace the fire fleet. Uh, it, you know, we will have to make improvements to parks and hundreds of thousands of dollars in road improvement. So I, I think we have a good story to write a story. You know, we, we have the facts, you know, to show we ask you for this, you were you honored us by allowing me to do this, and here's the results. So. Nice picture. Yes. That is Kansas <coughs> Avenue. Yep. They brought that for us. Mm -hmm. so. I miss the calendar too. That we'll get it up. We'll get it up. I, I, mean, I saw that when I came in. I was like, where's your calendar? About these yeah. days. I can put that in my office. Where's the calendar? So, <laughs> now, all kidding aside, thank you all very much. Like somebody said, you made our you make our, our job is easy. You do all the hard work. Well, we're so thank you again. You want to know what? I'm at uh, talking about the hot shot, which is this really cool. What's the, the subscription rate on that now? And also, I think that that would be a way you could kind of start advertising the special sales tax, mm -hmm. like a little blurb down there. Your tax You know, maybe your yeah. taxes, you know, your special sales taxes are allowing us to buy a fire truck. And that is probably a good idea to have a regular feature. We do try to highlight the budget decisions whenever after it's adopted throughout the end of the year. It's and like show what buy it. Mm -hmm. That is a good idea. But to answer your, your question about subscription rate, we are at five. 60, maybe 570, somewhere around there. I have to add it to it. it, it you get people all up and people come on it week to week. That's right around there with that. One thing we're talking about doing too is, is something I would like to, is like a decade in review. Because it's easy to forget what happened 10 years ago. Right? I mean, we, like, well, you, you know, I don't care about that. What did you do yesterday? What are you doing tomorrow, right? right? But I think it is important from the community life of what's where we're at, and quite honestly, the path we were on was not a path that anybody wanted to be on. What was this thing at? Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think we've made, and again, it's, it, it's not one year, it's not one person, it's been a cumulative effort over a decade, you know, kind of well, reviews. The, yeah, the think, next billing cycle, maybe think about sticking a flyer in there, getting some highlights. Yeah. The Hot Shot newsletter comes out every Friday, here's your, you know, mm -hmm. tell them how, where to go, mm -hmm. sign up for that tonight. Put some really interesting things in that. That's a good idea. The flyer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you could advertise that. When is the next one? Did it come out? Uh, the next building? It'll be out before the, it'll be probably the last week of this month. Of advertise August. the festival? I mean, there's yeah, that's what we're planning on, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just having a, a flyer for the festival. Perfect. Give some information how to get there. Mike and Zach, thank you for this document. This has been this is really easy to follow. And as Chuck has said, over the years you've continually stepped up and made it a lot easier for us to understand what's going on, where the money's going, where it comes from, and the whole thing. Thank you for that. With that, we are here. Yeah, I'm just going to say, uh, I'll just say this. Uh, we are we are looking at doing a joint. Council workshop yeah. on 17th of September with Bonner Springs. Uh, the county, the county manager, had offered to go present the budget, the county budget, to them. Mm -hmm. And they called us and said, "Well, we're, we're going to go to there. They'll come and do it to you." 
and myself and the city manager there, the mayor said, well, we're going to do that. Could we maybe just do a joint workshop? I, I don't have all the details yet, but you might do the third Monday, so it's our off one. Could we both have council meetings on the same night? And you know, cut block and you know, some maybe Mayor Alvey and, and you know, our commissioners. So we got to just do a presentation on you know, if adopted, here's the county budget, here's the services we do, and just kind of have some dialogue about some of the county services, you know, what we can, for that 21 cents, you know, so we understand what that is and, and give us an opportunity to say, hey, you know, what about this? Why is it more? Talk about sci fi as a, as a, you know, I know that's in common. Bonner Springs has asked the same questions, and so. You know, it's just an opportunity for us to come together, the two cities with our county representatives and trying to have a meeting, a meeting, a meeting. Is that going to be here? Uh, I don't know if it'll be here in Bonner Street. We'll, we'll figure out. It, it, I mean, we need a room big enough, so uh, we may need a community center, may do it over there, or their, their center, or maybe even like, you know, up at the, the, the park. So we were doing it for the mine center. So just kind of a new point. We just don't, so we might just pin, we're looking at probably 6 o'clock uh, that evening. And, 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 and,